Hello and welcome back to another episode of Skypothesis Vanilla Skyrim Character Builds. We are dedicated to keeping the magic of Skyrim alive by sharing with you the builds that have helped us gain a deeper roleplay experience and truly experience all that this fantastic game has to offer. We love getting as creative as possible with what the game has to offer and create builds that are completely vanilla, though we do use a few visual mods solely for the sake of making these videos look nice. We take inspiration from as many fantasy sources as we can to help us build these characters, and we love sharing them with you. Today's build is one of our all-time favorites, the Savage Reaper. This creepy Khajiit is at home in the wilds of the world and lives on the edge of society. He is a dead-eye archer even on horseback and rides around the dark countryside lopping off heads and stealing souls with his headsman's axe. His pledge to serve the ideal masters has given him an unnaturally long life, along with incredible strength and precision in his craft. This is one of our most unique builds to date and we can't wait to get started. So without further ado, let's jump into our latest character, the Savage Reaper. The year was 98 of the Fourth Era. The moons of Nern, Secunda, and Masser suddenly vanished from the night sky. The moons have guided society and elsewhere since the dawn of their civilization. Their disappearance sparked confusion and panic all across Tamriel, but it was nothing compared to the chaos it caused in elsewhere. The world lived without their moons for two whole years until one day, they miraculously returned to the sky with the Thalmor taking credit for their return. This period came to be known as the Void Nights. Because the moon that a Khajiit is born under determines their form, we believe the moon's disappearance could have caused some major complications. Almost every Khajiit born during the Void Nights died almost immediately. During the first few weeks of the Void Nights, amidst the ensuing panic and confusion, a young Khajiiti couple fled into the wilderness to escape political turmoil. The mother was expecting a child, but knew that with the moons gone from the sky, her baby would almost certainly die. With only a few weeks before the baby was to be delivered, the couple sought out healers, witch doctors, and even a coven of necromancers in hopes that they might be able to help their child live. Finally, after almost giving up in despair, a wizard shaman living in an old tower on the outskirts of Rimen offered them hope. I can make you no promises myself, he said, leading them into one of the tower's dark rooms, but they might. He closed the door. The room was empty, save a single box in the center. Upon approaching the box, a single soul gem rose up into the room, glowing and pulsing with unnatural life. An ideal master spoke to them personally and a deal was made. They would harvest souls and send them to the soul cairn and in return, the ideal masters would bless their child with life. The deal was made. He was born completely healthy, though with pale white fur and glossed over eyes. They spent the next two years as wandering reapers, killing and harvesting souls to keep their son alive. Even after the moons returned to the sky, they continued their savage way of life in the wilderness, on an endless moonlit quest to appease their new masters, and in turn keep their son alive. Eventually, the savage reaper's parents died of old age, he would now have to rely solely on his own efforts to harvest souls for the ideal masters and receive their blessing of life. He forged his own path ahead, riding horseback through the night, cursed to live the only life he knew, the life of a savage reaper. The roleplay begins when the savage reaper is caught at the border of Helgen. Skyrim was the last country he hadn't visited in his 100 long years of life. Whispers of ancient threats returning to the world drew him there, along with a feeling that there were powerful souls to be harvested. He didn't know what he was getting himself into, and the thought that he would soon be able to absorb dragon souls could not have been further from his mind. Though upon the discovery that he is dragonborn, the Savage Reaper becomes obsessed with the idea of absorbing dragon souls, and it becomes a new way for him to gain power. More than any other build we've created, this one we took care not to follow certain tropes. There are many builds out there that interpret Death, one of the horsemen of the apocalypse, and they're popular for a reason. But we wanted to make our version unique. He is a Khajiit who lives in the wilds, cursed to survive by stealing the souls of others. So we favored a rough, animalistic aesthetic over dark hooded robes. This aesthetic reflects his barbaric nature, and we decided not to make him a necromancer. He is more of a warrior class than a mage, switching between battle axe and archery combat with equal skill in both. We still wanted to keep that enticing reaper feel, and there's just no better way than on horseback. 
You can buy or steal a horse early on in the playthrough, but prioritize the Dark Brotherhood questline so you can get Shadow Mirror as early as possible. This invincible horse will always be there when you need him, and his dark coat and red eyes really add to the experience. Inside dungeons you will play as a sneak archer or an open combat battle axe wielder, but outside in the wild you should always prioritize horseback combat. Speaking of fighting on horseback, let's dive further into Skyrim's mechanics. Horseback fighting can feel very clunky and awkward at first, and aiming a bow can feel impossible. Many players, including us, were quick to dismiss horses as useless outside of fast transportation. However, this playthrough really opened our eyes and we found horseback combat can be incredibly fun and rewarding. When done correctly, you can feel like death in Darksiders 2, cruising around on your horse, taking down enemies quickly and with style, all while remaining out of reach. We have a few basic maneuvers that have made horseback combat fun and effective that we are going to showcase in this build. The first basic maneuver you'll want to get used to is the figure 8. This is the most natural and effective method when fighting large, powerful enemies such as dragons and giants. You're able to charge in and get one or two good strikes before evading when your enemy can react. Making a figure 8 shape tends to be more effective than a small circle due to the difficulty Skyrim horses have in making sharp turns. Next up is Horseback Archery, made possible by taking both perks in Steady Hand in the Archery Tree. While mounted, you're able to move quickly in one direction, while having about a 270 degree range of motion to fire off a shot. This provides you with a crazy amount of flexibility to get the right shot, and your speed will always keep you out of range from your enemies. Both perks and steady hand allows you the necessary time to aim. Without these perks, horseback archery is significantly more difficult. We found it best to make a really wide circle around enemies, avoiding sharp turns. It's also important to note that you should always sheath your weapon manually before slowing down and dismounting. This saves about a full second of time in dismounting and can make a big difference in the heat of battle. If you don't manually sheath your weapon, you will be forced to wait through the sheathing animation while Shadowmere is standing still. Remembering this can make a big difference when you've breached the walls of a fortress. In terms of questlines, we felt a lot more freedom with this guy than we normally do. He looks out for himself, and there is nothing he wants to pursue more than perfecting his craft in enchanting and absorbing the souls of both dragons and mortals. However, as mentioned previously, the first questline you should do is the Dark Brotherhood. The sooner you get Shadowmere, the sooner the build feels put together. Once you obtain your steed, the pace for the rest of this questline, and all others for that matter, is completely up to you. Next is the Thieves Guild. He joins up early, as it's always helpful to have friends in underground societies. You will want to do at least 5 Radiant quests in Windhelm to get Linway's Hood so you can complete the aesthetic. The main quest, Dawnguard, Dragonborn, and College of Winterhold questlines can be completed at your leisure. He will join the Dawnguard because an immortal vampire soul is worth a lot to the Ideal Masters. When you arrive in the Soul Cairn, make the most of your time there. This is the most important part of his roleplay. He should uncover every single secret there, and eventually face the actual Reaper of the Soul Cairn, the mysterious entity whose likeness he unwittingly imitated in his service to the Ideal Masters. The most important side quest is Ill Met by Moonlight, so you can get the armor the Saviors hide, but other relevant quests include Forbidden Legend, The Wolf Queen Awakened, The Ghost of Old Herolden, and The Siege on the Dragon Colt. Moving on to the Savage Reaper's weapons and armor. For his main weapon, he will carry the Headsman's Axe, obtainable from Atar's inventory after completing his miscellaneous quest in Solitude. Alternatively, you can just kill Atar and loot it from his corpse, which is totally something the Savage Reaper would do. We'll leave this choice up to you. This axe has some disadvantages, namely the fact that it has a relatively low base damage and cannot be improved at a grindstone. It is, however, the longest weapon in the game, and can reach enemies that would otherwise be out of range. This is incredibly helpful for horseback combat and makes it much, much easier. Enchant it with Fiery Soul Trap and Absorb Health, so you can burn the life essence from your marks as you brutally steal their soul. These enchantments more than make up for the relatively weak base damage, and we will be enchanting armor pieces with Fortify Two-Handed, helping even further. Another good option are the Ancient Nord Battle Axes. These are hooked like a Reaper's Scythe, and are a great option to use while leveling. He will also carry an enchanted Imperial Bow, with the most powerful raw elemental damage, Shock and Chaos damage. K-1 
Chaos has the highest damage output, and shock damage is universally useful against all types of enemies, especially dragons. We chose the Imperial Bow for its sturdy yet rugged look. For his armor, he will be wearing the Savior's Hide, a Daedric artifact of the Hunter Hercene, granting 15% magic resistance and 50% poison resistance. You can obtain this Quirus at the end of the quest, Ill Met by Moonlight. The fur trim and spikes along the collar make for a fantastic, savage aesthetic and looks great on Khajiit. He will wear Linwei's hood on his head for 15% increased bow damage, in addition to the fact that it looks like a pointed reaper's hood. The patchwork of the cloth is featured more prominently on beast races, and we were surprised by how good it looks when combined with the armor. You will enchant a pair of Stormcloak Officer's Boots with Fortify Sneak and Two-Handed, and Stormcloak Officer's Gauntlets with Fortify Archery and Two-Handed. These boots and gauntlets match the rugged, wild aesthetic perfectly with their leather accents and spikes. For his amulet, he will wear the Warding Talisman, a self-crafted Bonehawk amulet with resist magic and resist frost. This will save your skin when fighting mages and frost dragons trying to slow down your onslaught. Head to Castle Volkahar at any point to shoot down the Bonehawks for materials. This amulet really ties together the aesthetic, and it even looks like it's pulling in the base of Linwei's hood, creating the fold in the fabric. Also, the shape of the Savior's hide allows it to be featured prominently. For his ring, he will wear the Ring of Namira, which grants an additional 50 stamina, along with the ability to feed on fallen corpses. Feeding on a corpse will increase your health by 50, along with 50% increased health regen for 5 minutes. While terrifyingly creepy, it's wicked powerful and fits the Savage Reaper perfectly. With the Ring of Namira and your Absorb Health Headman's Axe, you'll absorb all of the health and stamina you need in combat. For spells and shouts, we are giving priority to casts like Arneal's Shade, Spectral Assassin, Call of Valor, and Summon Dernavir. These spells and shouts revolve around bringing back souls of the dead to fight for you, and we roleplay that they are rewards from the Ideal Masters for his tiring work of harvesting. Keep in mind that Dernavir is a super unique dragon. He can be summoned indoors, in Sovngarde, and even in Apocrypha. Solterre will also be used, though this is the only necromantic shout or spell we will be using for this character. Again, we wanted to steer clear of the normal tropes that are associated with a Reaper-like character, and we found that the Horseback Warrior archetype provided a unique spin on what is normally a dark hooded necromancer. For stats and perk spread, we chose to level the Savage Reaper with a ratio of 2 health for every 1 in stamina. If you would like a slightly larger Magicka pool for restoration spells, you can add a few points there, but we felt the need to give him as much health and stamina as we could. We chose to use the Shadow Stone for its useful ability to allow yourself to turn invisible once per day. As he isn't perking illusion or alchemy, this ability is super useful when you really need to get in the right position before unleashing death upon your foes. He is, of course, a Khajiit, granting him night vision, claws, and a handy plus 10 to sneak and plus 5 to archery. Very helpful for this build. By the time you reach level 40, you'll want the following perks. In archery, take all 5 in overdraw, eagle eye, and both perks in steady hand. The extra perk in steady hand makes aiming on horseback actually possible. In two-handed, take all 5 in barbarian, champion stance, devastating blow, and sweep. In Enchanting, you will take all five in Enchanter, Soul Squeezer, Insightful Enchanter, Corpus Enchanter, and Extra Effect. Soul Siphon will not be used because he isn't interested in animal or creature souls, just the harvesting of black souls from humans. He will take the Novice and Apprentice perks in Restoration, along with Regeneration for 50% increased fast healing when he gets low on health. In Light Armor, take one in Agile Defender and one in Custom Fit for a combined 45% increase in Light Armor rating. Finally in Sneak, take all five in Stealth, then follow the left side of the tree up until Silence. Keep in mind that we use level 40 as a checkpoint, not an exhaustive list of all the best perk choices for a character. Level 40 is about the time a build really starts to feel put together, so that's the level we choose to showcase. If you plan to play past level 40, you would do well to put a few more perks in light armor, along with archery and two-handed for more damage output. Smithing can also be added if the damage from enchanting is not enough on higher difficulties. Alright, it's time to showcase the Savage Reaper's special moves. In this section, we share move combinations that give this build unique gameplay from other similar archetypes. We love hearing special move ideas you have, so let us know in the comments what moves you come up with. 
First off is Savage Feast, performed by combining Summon Durnavir with the Ring of Namira. When low on health and surrounded by a multitude of enemies, the Savage Reaper has the ability to call forth Durnavir from the Soul Cairn to ravage your foes with Frost Breath, Drain Vitality, and Conjured Bonemen and Wrathmen. As the bodies drop, use the Ring of Namira to feed, replenishing your health and granting you increased health regen for 5 minutes. Up next are his Soulbound Allies, which are a collection of departed souls who, for one reason or another, are bound to serve the Savage Reaper when needed. His possible ghostly allies include Arniel's Shade, Spectral Assassin, and the ancient Nord heroes from the shout Call of Valor. His final special move is called Banishment, performed by combining Nightingale Strife and Soul Tear. This wicked 1-2 punch deals 400 damage almost instantly and raises the target as your own personal meat puppet. The Savage Reaper learned this move, observing the combat of a crazed desert performer, watching on from the shadows. And with that, we are ready to wrap up this build video. The Savage Reaper presented a unique challenge to us, as we wanted to make a Reaper character that did not follow the usual dark, hooded, necromantic tropes. The end result was an incredibly fun to play Khajiit, with a very interesting backstory and playstyle. We've had so much fun with this build and it has definitely become one of our all-time favorites. We hope you enjoyed the video and have an even better time playing as the Savage Reaper. Thank you so much for watching, your support means a lot to us. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to help us keep the magic of Skyrim alive. We'll see you next week for a brand new build right here on Skypothesis.